Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is part two of my understanding PIDs and tuning video. Um, so in this video, I'm going to go over the PIDs values again, and also a little bit more about tuning before I start going into the PID numbers. So just to repeat, so the tuning for a quad is basically about making sure that when a quad is flying, when you input your stick's command, the quad will move according to how your stick's command uh, inputs. So say you pitch forward, you will go pitch forward, backwards, left, right, and yaw. So how fast it goes forward, backward, left, right, or yaw, depending on the depends on the uh, P number. The higher the P, the more power you give it, the faster it goes. Alright? The I and the D are just there to help um, correct any errors from going from zero to that position. So meaning that with I, you will make sure that it goes, if you want to go forward, it will go forward so that it doesn't drift left or right. So with the I, you will make that correction. With D, if you can make the correction to make sure that when you actually move forward, although you want it to be very fast, you want to make sure that when it goes forward, it, it slows down just a bit to make it a bit smoother. So it doesn't go like jerky. So you go like that. So that's how PIDs work. So the lower the P, the less resistance, no, no, the lower the D, the less resistance you will give to the movement. So the higher the D, there will be more dampening uh, effect on the P. The I is just to make sure it doesn't drift around, it goes straight. So D, make sure that it goes smoothly. P is really the main uh, numbers where you give it the power to go forward, left, right. The higher the P, the faster it goes, except for the D is the lower the D, the less resistance. So this shape is a perfect uh, quadcopter shape. So this is an X shape and this is all balanced out. So if you put a bit more weight on top of that, which means that uh, if you pitch forward, the weight will probably move it a bit faster forward. So maybe you have to put in more corrections. So say for example, uh, if, it's, if it's a bigger quad, uh, you put a 4S battery on top of that, and then you got your camera in front of you. So which means that in the back portion, the, the weight will be uh, higher, so it will be heavier in the back than the front. So which means when you pitch forward, you probably need to have a higher P to pull it forward. So, but because you have to go back to the original position, you have to snap back. So you probably need a bit more uh, eye correction and also a bit more D, uh, D to smooth the process out. So anyway, that's just a recap of PIDs and tuning. So this video is really about the experimenting with PID numbers. If you recall part one, I mentioned that the PIDs numbers are in a range. So it's in a range of the minimum, which is very floaty, where you don't have control. And the maximum is where there's a lot of oscillation, where there's over correction. So you put it too much, you will go like that. When you put it back, you, you will keep on oscillating like that. So any lum numbers between 
the minimum and the maximum will do. So I'm trying to prove that uh, using this video. So I've used a perfect X-shaped quad and I use a micro because it's much easier to demonstrate this uh, indoors so it won't cause much damage. So in this demonstration, in this experiment, I've used the numbers for the PID's number for Aurora 100 Q70 Wizard X220 and the Q100 and the Smart 100. Q100 and the Smart 100 PID's numbers are the same. So I keep all the other numbers constant including the yaw rates and the TBA breakpoint. I find that in acro mode there's not much difference between all the numbers. They all fly uh, perfectly and um, only in the angle mode there is slight oscillation in some of the numbers. So that's fine because uh, with angle mode there's different tuning because you need to tune in angle mode. So but because in the acro mode everything works fine and there's no drifting, it means that you can use any numbers in between the minimum and the maximum and the quad as long as it is balanced you will fly fine. So as long as you don't have a voice battery then you it's not that heavy any minimal shape quad with the standard batteries and camera will fly the same. So before I forget, when you have 3x battery PIDs and 4x battery BIDs, the reason why they're different because of the weights, so you need different set of numbers. Apart from that, any PIDs number for uh, any quad will work. I think this applies to micro and mini quads. So I'll let you guys see the rest of the video and which proves what I have been saying. And before I sign off, I just want to mention that there is no need to tune your quad, whether it's micro or mini quad, every time when you get a new one. The stock PIDs that it comes with will fly fine. But make sure that you go in and change the rates because the manufacturer will most likely tone down the rates to make sure that they're not too fast. But from my personal experience, the rates, pitch roll in your rates of about 70 is just right. And the other thing that I must uh, tell you before I sign off is that when you're flying FPV, you need faster rates because once you put on your goggles, you cannot see your quad and you want a lot of control with quad. So if you, you want to yaw very fast, you want to pitch roll very fast, you want to roll very fast. And with FPV, you can control that with your first person view. So anyway guys, enjoy the rest of the videos. Please like. Uh, this video if you enjoy it and please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos so until next time cheers enjoy the rest of the video